Welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint and the resin printers are taking over at the moment. Let's take a look at the 3D Talk Tech 100, but first of all, roll those credits. Okay, so we had the Voxel Labs printer, very nice. Now we have the 3D Talk Tech 100. So you'll remember that 3D Talk are a little bit of a different company because they tend to go more than a little bit overboard with a lot of their features and a lot of their um, a lot of their build quality. Take a look at the video link below, which is to the FAM 260, an absolutely over-engineered Ender 3, basically, with, with linear, with big giant MGN 15 linear rails and all sorts of garb. But we're here today to talk resin. Okay, let's take a look at these guys. So first things first, we'll take a look at these raw prints. So let's just get this to focus. There we go. Look at that bad boy. So this is the ornamental tort uh, squirtle, sorry, from uh, from Thingiverse. Came out really nice. He's hollow as well. And then, just to jump on the uh, on the social bandwagon, this is the Squid Games Chibi, also from Thingiverse. I'll put the link in the video description. So let's slap some primer on these guys and see how they look. Okay, these have only just had a hit of primer on them, so bear with me a little bit because I just want to show you what these are looking like. So, we'll start off with the chibi. So, if we bring this here, you can see all of, I mean, the detail in this, even his little rifle came out properly. All the detail in his mask, all the little pitting, like a little fencing mask. Everything came out on that. And then we've got the little squirtle as well. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. So both of these models are from Thingiverse. I'll pop the link in the video description, but I think we can agree. Absolutely flawless prints there. Really, really happy. No failures at all. Just stuck the prints on, off they went, well happy with them. So as you already know, the channel has started to take a look at resin models. This is so that we can really start to bring some more quality to the models that we're doing, trying to do some finer detail work that FDM just wasn't designed to do. So as you know on the channel, we tend to do quite large stuff into Sauron or the big spaceships and things like that. Um, that isn't necessarily what resin is for. It's certainly not what these are for. Um, let's just talk about the stats of this machine, right? So it's 128 by 81 by 150. So slightly different, um, slightly different build volumes than a couple of others, but that's the size of the build plate. It's still not huge. It's comparable to the Photon or to the Sonic Mini or, um, or to the Proxima that we did, the Proxima 6 inch, very comparable build volume. Um, it's a 2K monochrome screen. It has anti-aliasing, a parallel light source, linear rails, and it also looks like an egg. Cool. Um, so this is pitched in a little bit of a different direction, okay? It's not really for these sort of miniatures. You can absolutely use it for that, but it's not really for that. What it's for and what it's designed for is for dental resin 3D printing. Um, the price tag, however, does not reflect that because the price tag on this is about 250 US dollars, which is about 180 pounds. So it's slightly more expensive than, say, a Photon or a Proxima, but bearing in mind most dental surgeries would probably be using Flash Forge Hunters, or they might be using Form Labs machines, or they might be using Peopolis, or something like that. This comes in at a savagely low price compared to that. So let's take a look under the hood. So the first thing that I will note is that whilst I was using the Proxima 
At some point, I may have knocked some resin out of the vat. I don't recall doing it, but maybe there were some drips when I was trying to fill it or whatever. No drips in this one, bone dry, and this is still a very clean hood. One criticism of the hood. It is not UV protective. Now, as it is where we are in the studio, there's really no light, there's really no sort of outside natural light to get into this to cure the resin. So our resin is still fine. Um, but if you had this in a normal room with normal natural light, you would either have to cover it or you'd have to coat this in something to stop that UV light from curing, um, from, from curing the, the material in the vat. So that's not ideal, but it's not a deal breaker. There's plenty of machines that, that don't actually block UV rays. So it's not like it's the only one, just a little bit annoying. Um, it is, does feel a touch oversized. And, um, and I mean, the power cord is not long. So this is the power cord <laughs> and that's it. That's all you get. So if you ever need to move the machine out from where it is, say you had some in racking, um, it's that you actually have to unplug the machine to take it out and there's no carry handles on the side so you can't pick it up you're just picking up an egg so those parts aside it has got a linear rail back here an MGN 12 it has a uh, it has a nice and easy to detach build plate just undo the screw there and it comes out and you can't put this in the wrong way around because there's a little notch on the front there that means that you always put it back in the same place and you're always bang on aligned. So I really like that. Um, it has got a little filtration unit down here. I don't think that's carbon activated and it's definitely not HEPA. So, um, you know, it, you'll still get a little bit of that resin smell from it, but it is what it is. One thing I do really like, and it sounds so silly, but when you undo your thumb screws, your thumb screws, fold down and then your vat lifts up and out very nice and then it just whoop, slots straight back on these go up screw down and your vat's not going anywhere i really like that and if you were to ask me why i really like that i don't even know that i could really tell you because i don't actually think that the other designs are that much they're not hard to use i don't really think that's solving a problem i just really like it i like the fact that you unscrew these big meaty thumb screws so if you've got gloves on which i should have right now but i don't because i'm a maverick um you can just whoop, like that and then off comes the vat with these nice handles either side and you take the vat wherever you're going and then it just slots back nicely and then whoop, like that job done so i really like that you've taken a look at the models right the models are flawless this is a 2k monochrome screen a chi2 box board so you're not going to get any material surprises this machine is actually pre-market at the moment so 3d talk our ring i think they're called um, are actually looking for suppliers both in the UK, the US and, and all over. So have a little check out of their website in the video description um, and certainly where you can reach out to them about becoming a distributor. But this is a nice resin machine. Works really well, easy to level. You undo these four screws here, lower the build plate, that squares it off against the screen screw them back up nice and tight never need to level it again you go into the bed leveling system to do the uh, to do the z offset again same as all the others just lower it down to z move it up until the paper moves and then you just reset your z offset super super easy you saw on our live stream that we were up and printing inside of 25 minutes there's really no assembly there's no there's no hassle um the resin that I used was an Anycubic Clear. You can see um, that when these prints came out before, um, it doesn't really dry clear. It dries sort of 
sort of, I don't know, it goes yellow, but it also sort of goes frosted, so it's not really clear. I will, however, say that this resin is probably two years old, um, so I was amazed that it printed at all, if I'm willfully honest, but it did. Um, there's a little fill spout, both on the left and right hand side at the front, so that you can pour your resin back in when you are done. And outside of that, there are no surprises with this machine. It does what it says on the tin. It's actually a really, really good price for how much you're spending on a unit like this. It's really well put together, really solidly built, throws out some great models, and it is a price that you can justify. If you don't want to go for sort of a, a budget, lower-end machine, um, you know, but you still don't want to break the bank, this is still under £200. And if you're using it for dental applications or something like that, and you're not moving the machine around, this is going to be a really good buy. It's going to, it's going to do everything you need it to. A 2K monochrome screen is going to have a nice long maintenance life. So I think it's like, if I remember rightly, it's like two to 3,000 hours on a monochrome screen. But regardless, it's it's a solid it's a solid build. There's going to be very little maintenance that you have to worry about with this. And to be honest with you, there's really not too much to say about it other than that. Keep an eye on the channel because we're going to be doing some more resin printing coming up. Um, Mike's got his big Chevy that he's doing um, and we're going to be doing some resin printing on that because we've got some parts in there that really need the detail. We'll be doing them on this. Um, and outside of that, Honestly, it's just a solid machine that does its job. It does what it says on the tin. You know, it's a no frills, really solid machine. And it, I think the biggest shame, really, is that right now, you can't buy one. Um, <laughs> so because they don't have their distributors um, up and running yet, and they don't sell what's classed as B to C, they don't sell business to client, they sell business to business. And um, because of that, they're actually really, really hard to come by. Um, they're really difficult to find in, in stock anywhere. You can reach out to our ring, and I'm sure they would be more than happy to sell you a machine, but what they're really looking for is distributors. So if you own a store and you want to start stocking some solid resin 3D printers, enter Federer. This is the kind of thing that you probably want to start looking at, um, looking at getting in stock. But, um, but outside of that, what more can you really say? Um, I've said in my other video, and I'll say it again, we don't use water washable resins on this channel. Matt Farmer and I are doing somewhat of a crusade against water washable resins. Um, they are bad for the environment. They're poor quality. They end up breaking, or, they, or a lot of the models end up cracking after the fact. They're quite structurally weak. They can be over-cured very easily, and they become exceedingly brittle. Um, they, they encourage you to think that resin, because it's water washable, it must just be much safer than the regular resins that you use, and therefore you don't need gloves or eye protection or anything else. These models are already cured. Okay, so there's really no reason why I need to be using gloves to handle these. I probably should have done when I was handling the vat, but I wasn't, you know, there's hardly any resin in there and I wasn't moving it around or anything like that. So I wasn't too concerned. But you do have to treat resin with a degree of respect. Okay, there are a number of instances where people have had immediate chemical burns from, um, from resin. Those are a subsection of people who are actually allergic to the photopolymer resins that you use in these machines. So under normal circumstances, a normal person wouldn't get chemical burns. But Matt Farmer, for example, has managed to get some in his eye. I've had some in my mouth. It tastes terrible. Um, and it was literally where I wasn't even thinking. I had my gloves on. I'd been handling it and I scratched my mouth like that. And as I did that, I literally got a mouth full of resin that was on my glove. Oh, it was with me for days. It's gross. And I want to be clear, super poisonous. So, <laughs> so, um, so please, 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 if you are going to get a resin machine, please make sure you are careful with it. Please make sure you wear the right PPE, the right personal protective equipment, and treat resin with the respect that you need to. This isn't FDM printing, okay? You can 
get yourself in a lot of bother with uncured resin about the place and you know you, your dog ends up licking it up and you lose a dog to, to to print a mini you know it's not it's not worth it so so remember to be careful when you're buying these remember to be careful when you're using these um but outside of that guys please like and subscribe to the channel please like this video if you did like it put Put a comment in the video description if you'd like to see more from 3D Talk. And as I say, check out our Band 260 video from 3D Talk as well, because that was really cool. So, um, so thanks for joining us, guys, and we'll see you soon.